Hello, my name is Karx82, and welcome back to my Greg Tech New Horizon series. I'm just over by my bees checking out, and I have Diligent, Unwary, and Noble I'm working on. So, really close to getting the um, Industrious and the Imperial. The Noble line is the Imperial, and the Diligent and Unwary is the Industrious. Now, what I have done here is we bred the the drone so i have my diligent princess my noble princess and i've gotten a bunch of drones from them and what i am doing is actually as we can see i'm using these rocky queens um these are always going to be pristine whenever you break it from a, a hive they're going to be pristine so basically i'm getting a bunch of diligent drones taking the rocky queen and breeding it with the diligent zone drone then after usually about four or five uh, diligent drones that'll turn the Rocky Queen into a purebred diligent uh, queen. So I will have a pristine uh, diligent. And then same with like, I'll have a pristine, this is a, a Rocky that I'm turning into a, um, a noble, if we look at that. This is already turned into a purebred noble, but obviously the, the inactive traits are a bit different um because it has the rocky traits in it as well um so basically that's how i'm gonna get the pristine now it's probably unrealistic to want it but i would like every one of my like drones that i want it, i do want a pristine version of it um so that's kind of what i'm trying for at least for the, like the main ones um like the beginning of maybe the chain like i don't know i haven't 100 percent decided how i'm gonna go about doing that i just always want some like a backup uh for that and i don't even know where i'm gonna store them or anything i've just been throwing them in this compressed chest right here so here's all my pristine so i got you know from the the hides i got the meadows and forests and then i bred common pristine cultivated pristine and then i'll just kind of add rest and by the way these chests can be broken and they hold their inventory which is really cool i didn't know that um i guess i don't yeah so as we can see there's 59 items in there if we put it back down uh so that is really cool i did not know that was a feature um i've been whenever i go to like drop my miner I bring like a gold chest and then I use a dolly to bring it back so now that I know that um I won't do that anymore all right so let me figure out what we want to do here in this episode is that on that turned off I don't remember why I can't remember why I turned it off oh it probably got turned off no, I have no idea why that got turned off. Anyway, what are we down to? 395. I would like to upgrade that again. And uh, but that's a bunch of tungsten steel, which I don't have. Um, and have it pull out of the entire oil field. It'll do an eight by eight thing. And then I won't have to worry about it. I don't I don't particularly like having this right here in the base. Um, but anyway, let me figure out what I want to do today, and uh, we will come back. All right, one of the things I am finally getting around to doing is sorting out all of my fluids. I have different size tanks, and they're all spread out all over the place, and I want to get this uh, under control. So I have added a P2P channel. This is going to be dedicated just to my tanks. I wish I could like label this somehow, but uh, I don't think I can. And I am going to do all my fluids along this back wall. And as we see, I have the P2P tunnel right here, and then this will come up uh, with dense cable, and then I will have eight channels on the back and eight channels on the top either side so that'll be enough for 16 super tanks and then i'll have 
uh, 16 export buses and 16 uh, fluid storage buses eventually. Um, we'll do them like down here. And then two away from the wall because I've noticed when I've done one away from the wall it just gets a bit claustrophobic and I have such a large area that we don't need to worry about that. Um, but I have one over here. Oh, a naphtha. I'm already full up on naphtha. I have turned this off, though. Because I was actually full on fuel. I was up to like 4 million fuel, almost. Um, but I am losing a bit of power, I just noticed. And that's, I forgot, because I have my blast furnace running. Alright, but I have... As we can see, the, the things are full, and one of the reasons is I have fluids in there that shouldn't be in there. So the hydrogen sulfide is filling up that one. It should be in there, so I'm hoping this works. Now if I... Yeah. So if we do this, export bus. And then... Do that maybe I wonder if that I don't know if that is filling up I'm curious where that's coming from I think that may be coming from inside the ME system I don't think it's coming from here I wonder if we can extract only I don't particularly want to have to do this manually I mean I can with the These fluid cells, they hold quite a bit. I don't have the tungsten steel ones, though. Um, but as we can see, this one is... Yeah, so there, it's it's coming out of this one, as we can see. Alright. I'm curious why it stopped there for a second. I have no idea. Alright, so the next one, well, I kind of have to wait until this is emptied. Um, because I wanted to, like, empty the next one. And I'm going to lose, like, all this if I do. Can't move it. And trying to move it, like, manually is going to be a bit of a pain. I should just craft another... I wonder if I could throw an acceleration card in there. That may be an idea. What? I don't remember this being difficult to make. I think titanium it needed. Yeah, I don't have any of that, unfortunately. All right, so could borrow this one just to see if it makes a large difference. Let's do that. If we put this in here. Eh, it doesn't feel, I mean, yeah, it's faster, but it doesn't feel like that much faster. It's just going to take time, I think. Now that should have pulled everything out of the, the drive, did it? Oh, see, look, it's like in there as well. So it was in this one, it was in this one. So this is why my all my fluid things were up. So there we go, it pulled it out. I now have room. Um, question is, is it pulling out of this? All right, it is pulling out of this. Okay, nice. That's what I was kind of curious about. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move a bunch of, well, all of these over, I think. And replace which ones I need. Like, I don't think I need... I won't need this in a tank. I can just have this in the ME system. So small amounts is what I basically want in the fluid... The fluid cells. But, like, these large, like hydrogen and oxygen and nitrogen, I don't want those in the ME system. Anything that's going to be feeding into the system constantly, I don't want in a cell. 
I just don't want to have to worry about it, thinking it's going to get full at some point. And uh, yeah, so we'll be back uh, after that. I have kind of figured out what I want to accomplish in this episode as well. All right, a uh, quick update. I finally got an Imperial Queen with Ignoble and Industrious with Ignoble. Trying to get Majestic here. It's actually the the one right before the Imperial, but I got it, the Imperial already. And then I'm trying to turn these Pristine Rockies into Imperial and Industrious. So just thought I'd show that. Anyway, uh... I have decided I need to, we look at the steam turbine, the turbine is at 91%, so I need to, I'm going to have to replace the steam turbine at some point, and I decided why not just go ahead and upgrade it a little bit to produce some more power. Um, I know steam's not the best way to produce um, electricity, but I have all the infrastructure. I have a tree farm set up for it and everything, so might as well. Um, I am smelting up some tungsten still here. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to have to... I want to upgrade this turbine. I'm going to have to replace the dynamo hatch, and I'm going to have to replace this, because it's going to be EV power. So why don't we go ahead and just turn that off. And then we can be able to replace this. Oh, why did I break that? I don't know why I was breaking that. <laughs> anyway, uh, Dynamo, EV Dynamo. And then we will put that back and then these cables are already uh, EV. Now I need to replace this as well. Um, I do have this quest. This one, I never finished it because I didn't know which one I wanted, but we might as well take the EV hatch. And we will use that. So let's just go ahead and break this and then EV energy hatch. And start that again. All right, we are good. We're running. We're losing a bit of power because my blast furnace was running. But since it's such a huge buffer, it's gonna last forever. I just replaced those as well. All right, so should be able to turn this back on, and we should have no explosions. <laughs> that was a good sign. There, there it is. Just make sure that has no power in it. Make sure. Let's see, why doesn't this have a one amp? Wouldn't this say like one amp going along it? Hmm. I don't know. I mean. Yeah, it's producing. It should be producing power, right? I'm assuming. Yeah, it's producing power. This is draining steam. Interesting. I would have thought that would have said one amp going into that. Yeah. So that power is going up and down, so it is being drained. All right, interesting. Anyway, how much tungsten steel do we have? Do we have enough? Yeah, we're right on the edge. I'm going to... Oh, I can't sleep because it is night... Or it's not nighttime. So I think we need 12 rotors, and there's six each, so I need... 72 of that and then we need one long 
titanium rock. I can, now that I'm thinking about this, I can do this, right? Isn't, no, I can do it in a EV. I wasn't, I didn't know if it was an IV, but yeah, that needs a fusion reactor. I feel like that <laughs> needs like way more than an IV thing. Long tungsten steel. Yeah, it's just one tungsten steel rod. So I need, I think I have enough actually. Oh, I can actually, <laughs> I can autograph those. Right? Yeah. It takes a little second to turn on. Sometimes I've noticed. All right, so there's long tungsten steel rod and then see 45 plus what 20 27 ish thankfully we have this to produce these all right so let me uh get this all crafted up i gotta wait for the tungsten steel to cook up here and we'll replace it and we'll see how much power we get out of our steam turbine now all right, so I got the tungsten steel, and not gonna lie, that was a bit painful <laughs> doing 72 tungsten steel into that. Um, just because tungsten steel takes quite a while to cook up, and uh, I don't have a super uh, great um, access to tungsten. I have a lot of tungstates, but it's 7 to 1, so I don't have a whole lot of tungsten. Um, all right. But I think... Go ahead and we'll just turn this off. Um, if I get a dissembler, I can actually... Disassembler, I can actually pull this apart, I think. I don't know if... It doesn't look like they're... Yeah, there's no like a res recipe for it. Is that what it's called? Yeah, disassembler. Now you get... If you use like a basic disassembler, you get 60% of the materials back, 70, 80, or like an 80%, a 60% chance, I think it is. So if there's like six ingredients, each chance has like, each ingredient has a 60% chance of getting it back. I think that's how it works. So IV is like, you always get all your ingredients back. And you can do things like the wrench. I can put the wrench in and get all the different components back if I wanted. Um, at least that's what I seem to remember. Uh, I haven't used it in a long time. Um, but yeah, so we'll take that. We will do that. And then I guess we'll just go ahead and turn this off. And I've already broken this down once. <laughs> so let's come back. All right, I think we're set up here. Now I also, at my turbine, I also need these, um, these pipes to switch this to, I think it's a five, yeah. So I need these fluid pipes, high pressure fluid pipes for the steam because my, I think I have a large titanium fluid pipe. It's just not going to be enough um, because the fluid capacity is the size of the pipe. So it can hold 96,000, but it, it can only transfer half of that to an adjacent tank. So yeah, those tooltips are a bit misleading. Um, I think we're good with that. Now I did realize as I was picking it up and moving it, I had built it in between two chunks and that's not good. So I moved it over and uh, 
yeah, it ends up fitting there. I just don't like it having right next to the wall, but... Although this one is right next to the wall, I didn't realize that was. Anyway, I got a bigger output hatch. I had an LV one, so I decided to go for a bigger one. That I'll put there. I don't think we need a bigger hatch than that. I don't think it's going to go through 16 buckets. I don't think it's going to go faster than this thing can pull out. But I did have to move stuff around a little bit here. All right, so I did the maintenance that we needed. Now I'm just going to set up the uh, fluid regulator. So we needed to set it to 24,000. I think it's going to go up by 320. Yep, there we go. Perfect. So 24,000 liters a second. If we look at the tooltip, that's what it says. Optimal steam flow. Um, because obviously this will output more than that. Although the boiler should produce 24,000. So, I mean, I probably, I don't even know if I need that technically. Um, but in case, uh, like if this was like a different amount, maybe, I don't, if this was producing more or something like that, or then the regulator would probably work. It's usually better for like gas, um, but steam, I just kind of ended up picking a turbine and a, the boiler that matched. All right, so let's throw that in there. And then I think, I think we're good here. Let's do a quick backup because I'm also worried something's gonna explode. All right, so we're good. Replace that with EV, I replace that with EV. This is all in one chunk. I got the water reservoir in one chunk. The reservoir being in one chunk is the main so let's throw that in there. Hit it with the soft mallet. All right. So my the bronze boiler, the fuel lasted 113,000 seconds. So this is burns faster. Obviously, that's not uh, surprising. But we should be filling up here relatively soon. I don't think you can put the output hatches on the side, otherwise I would, so I could see what was going on in the hatch, because I can't see it. But there we go. So we're producing that. I wonder if it says, does it say how much it's producing? Can't remember. No, it doesn't say how much it is producing. All right, but I guess we should just go ahead and turn this on. And that'll be burning the fuel. See, I just don't know. Well, it does say if, uh, does it say if I click on that? I don't remember. No, it doesn't say how much is in the thing, but uh, we're up to 840 EU. All right, so it looks like this is outputting 840 EU, so a double basically. Um, I mean, it's not a great power source. I mean, this does more, and this is just some uranium. But this is completely renewable. It's easy. This was just steel to upgrade that. And uh, yeah, these turbine, this is 768,000. This had 256. So this is going to last for a very long time. Um, so yeah, pretty happy about that. Just kind of slowly increasing my, the power, power gen I have. So I have 2048 over here. I have 840 and then a thousand. And if I wanted, I could always in, put this up, uh, give it oxygen and that will produce 6,000 
you. So this is also expandable. Um, but yeah, I think I'm in between episodes. I'm going to craft up the gas turbine and get that going as well. And so I can start burning the naphtha that I have. 4,000 buckets of naphtha, I think, as a byproduct. Anyway, that is that upgraded. Now, before we wrap up this episode, there is one more thing I want to do, and that is hook up my clean room. Let me turn these off. Hook up my clean room to the wireless network. Um, so let me get some of this crafted up. I think it's, I don't remember the name of it. Wireless connector. And I think I need the wireless setup kit. And this stuff is pretty easy. I have a lot of this on, okay, maybe not on auto crafting, but I have some of it on auto crafting. Um, yeah, so we'll be back when I get that. All right, we are back. I got the wireless connector stuff. And I don't know how this works. I'm assuming you put down the two connectors and then click with the wire. Um, and I think I read, I read this a couple weeks ago, I think, but the distance between them determines how much it costs to run. So I am pretty full on cables over here. Um, so like just adding something is not super easy at this point. Although I do have one I have one free channel over here. So I could add it like right there maybe. Hold on. Doing this totally blind here, so we're kind of learning as we go. I'm like, do I really want to place it like right here? I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of that. I miss, yeah, this is gonna use a channel, I'm assuming, right? I mean, that seems pretty obvious. What? Is that one? Nope, that's full. All right, let me just, how about we just throw it down and see what happens and we'll see how much like it costs to run. Now that didn't get a channel, and I don't know if that's because... Ah, there's no free channels at all over there. That is why. I don't remember. <laughs> Try to remember which ones are... Alright, so here we go. How about we throw it right here? I should have had this figured out before I hit record, but, you know, why do things that way? All right, it hasn't... It hasn't popped up on a channel, so it may need to be connected before it does that. So let's go ahead and place this in here. I think I figured I'm going to put it here. And then we'll have, yeah, this is a bit awkward, unfortunately. So the interfaces will go on this side. I still have no way to get, an easy way to get, um, well, I could just like do it like that. And then we could input the lubricant. I'm not going to worry about that right this second. I want to get this hooked up. So I'm assuming we just right click on this. Let's see what happens. Bound to that and then I click on that. All right. And it does show. Okay. So if you hover over it, it'll show you where it's going. So it's connected. It's using 78 A per tick. Now, I don't know can't remember the conversion because that's not EU per tick. I was using... Okay, so that is quite a lot actually. That is definitely using a lot. I was using 1.13, so that's using almost 800 EU per tick. Just for that. Holy cow. Okay, 
So let's see what happens if we move it closer. If it's only like a couple blocks away, I want to see what happens with that. So where did I put it? I put it like right here. If I put it right here, I'm curious what it would do. Now, the only problem is getting the channel to this thing. Oh boy, because that's like not going to be super easy. Yeah, let me figure out how I want to run some cabling here. And then we'll come back. All right, so I replaced some of this with dense cable. I ran a bit more than I usually like to run. I usually only like to run a couple dense cables and kind of have it sorted out like that. But um, I'm running this off this fluid interface. I'm not 100% sure this is going to work. I don't know if it needs to be directly connected, so we will find out with that as well. Where am I? Turned around. So let's go ahead and connect this. So that's only using 14A protect. Okay, so that's much better. <laughs> uh, it can't get any closer, I don't think. No. So let's take a look at this. All right, so that's much better. Um, as opposed to 800, it's using about 100. But does it show up on here? It does. So it's... F yeah, it's 14 EU per tick, but it's times 10. So 140 EU per tick that's using. So, all right. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, uh, let's... I can do... I don't know if I have enough titanium for this. No. Let's do, well, the precision laser engraver probably doesn't, let's do two, I guess. Oh, I'm going to have to expand my, I'm thinking, I'm definitely going to have to expand this clean room. I think it's probably time to just buckle down and get it. It's just black steel. I have it all auto crafting and concrete. It's not difficult. It's the, it's the filters on top, which are a pain. Um, because I need to get, I want to get the fluids going in here automatically. Yeah, even in this one, it needs fluid as well. So I think if I had a five by five center, it would be much easier to work with than the three by three. So I think I'm just going to buckle down and do that. But let's go ahead and see if. That works. I guess we'll throw that one up there for now. I'll put that to the left. That to the left. Make sure they can accept from the inside or the accept from the output side and then can't see if that's that did connect. So is that, yeah, okay, so it connected. Oh wait, but I just realized, like how does the channels work? Online, online. So, The, does this not use a channel? I guess it doesn't, because if those are the two channels. Yeah, so I guess I guess the actual wireless thing does not use a channel. I was thinking that may use a channel, but it looks like it connected. All right, so let's go ahead and take this stuff out. And put this in my. That's weird. It's not letting me. It's not letting me move that. 
So let's pull these out. I guess put them in here. And let's give this a go. Need plenty of nano circuits, so let's. How about we do. Now let's just do one for now. I'm uh, running low on gold. Just because it's quicker. So it's crafting everything up. In the final electron wires. It's crafting that up. Gold foils for. The circuit board. The circuit board should turn on. There it goes. Just wanted to see this work. I don't know if it already went and I didn't notice. There it goes. And then it should auto output. Back into the A system, and then that should have completed. So there we go. We got our clean room hooked up to our A system, and uh, wasn't too difficult at all. Um, these wireless connectors, though, are locked behind a quest. Um, unfortunately, it's locked behind this dense thing, so I haven't done this yet. Um, because the dense energy cells require LUV circuits, so I haven't bothered doing that yet, and the wireless stuff is locked behind that. Um, the quest, at least, for this wireless connector, so that feels like it's a little out of... Like, that feels like it shouldn't be locked behind that, um, because it is pretty important. Because um, I think that's the only way you can get your wireless network into the clean room. But anyway, this episode's running a bit long here, so it's time to wrap up. Um, I, uh, in between episodes, I think we're going to expand the Plast Grid. I think it's finally time to do that. And I think I'm also going to get a gas turbine set up as well, because the more I'm expanding my A network, the more it is a drain on my power. And we're good for now. But... Uh, yeah, don't want to stop uh, increasing the power gen here. Let me sleep and then really quick, I want to go check on my bees, see if we got anything anything better. Now there's probably like a bunch of mobs over here. Yeah. So nope, still didn't get that. I think the Imperial is finally. In here we've got the industrious pristine that's always good throw that in there to make sure i think these are good yeah these are good i'm using these to get the drones for this that's what i was doing so there we go all right well i'm gonna head back to the base and let that zombie just run away and uh yeah call it an episode here so thanks for watching and have a good one